Hello and welcome to Jim's Tabletop Wargaming. Today we're going to be painting some Necron Scarabs from the Indomitus box. The colour scheme I've chosen is based on the old test scheme I did a while back, but I'm going to combine it with some dry brush glow effects to try and improve it. On screen now are the paints and brushes I've used in this video should you wish to follow along or create something similar. First off we need to complete the base for the model as it will be very difficult to do once it's attached. For this I am blocking out the holes with blue tack to prevent basing materials clogging the holes. Next take some PVA glue and an old brush you don't mind potentially ruining and apply a small amount to the base. It's a good idea to wet the brush first and then begin spreading the glue all over the top of the base, avoiding the rim around the outside as best you can. If you clean your brush in the paint water, do not forget to change it before painting to avoid contaminating your paints. Next, take a rag or kitchen roll and remove any excess glue you may have spread onto the rim. I prefer to base my models with sand and rocks. This one is a discontinued kit I'm using up at the moment, but Army Painter does their own version that looks pretty much identical. Add a small amount of rocks randomly to the base, followed by a pinch of fine gravel and then we bury the base under the sand like so patting it down gently to ensure it adheres to the PVA remove the base from the sand and ensure the coverage is even here a rock has come loose so I'm just going to cover that gap with sand Wipe away any excess sand from the rim of the base and leave for a few hours to dry. I usually leave mine overnight. Now that it's fully dried I'm going to remove the blue tack. It may be worth pushing it through from the other side with a scraping tool or paintbrush handle as that might be easier. Dab away any remaining blue tack with more blue tack as this will pull it right out without the need for scraping. Now is a good time to test fit the model and ensure everything looks and fits exactly how you want. So once again it's a good idea to remove the model from the other side using a tool so we can avoid damaging the small parts. I seal my bases with PVA and water mix, it should flow well like you see here but not separate out. And lightly apply this all over the sand, being careful not to move the sand around too much. It will look a little bit messy at first but once it's dried it will leave behind a nice rigid texture that should prevent any sand coming loose in future. I've left this overnight to dry and here is the result, it's nice and solid. Onto the painting, first we start with two base coats of Abaddon Black, keeping them thinned down so we can keep the rough texture of the base. Right now that we've left that to dry, we're going to start with the dry brushing stage. So we'll start with Eshin Grey in a hobby dry brush. I'm going to try and get as much of the paint off of the brush as possible using the palette and also using this piece of kitchen towel. It's best to go on as thin as possible and build the layers up as you go. 
Move the brush back and forth across the surface, changing directions every so often just to ensure you get a decent coverage. And there we go. Next we're going to go in with Dawnstone just to add that slight subtle highlight to the top. So same method as before, we're just going to build that up slowly. Now we're going to add some Dawnstone just onto the rocks themselves, so the largest two that are on the base here. So we just want to pick them out as best we can, you don't need to be too accurate with it, just really want to get the tops of each of these. Follow that up with Administratum Grey as another dry brush. So this will be the top highlight. And finally we're going to add an edge highlight to the rocks. So we're just going to go around with Administratum Grey and just pick out some of those sharper edges. Moving on to the scarabs themselves. I'm just going to base coat them with the bad and black just to hide the areas where we've corrected any mold lines or removed any of the prime by accident. Now to dry brush with Mephiston Red. This is just to add a subtle tint to break up the black on the larger panels. Going in now with Lead Belcher to pick out areas between the armour panels such as the small section at the back, the joints on the legs and small connections around the neck. Also painting the underside the same way, moving the model to get the best angle for the brush and avoid touching these raised areas. There we are. Now just to go in with a few corrections in places such as these bits of structural plastic. I want them to be black in this case so they're not as noticeable. Time to wash the whole model with Nolan Oil. This will darken the areas we have done in red and add a shade to the metallic details. As you can see this is what it looks like when dried. Next we move on to some edge highlights using Mephiston Red, aiming for the edges of the armour panels, the head, the raised details on the underside, and also the tips of the legs. Now to go in with Evil Sun Scarlet and pick out some sharp angles on those edges, highlight the head and the tips of the legs. Following this up with some Rune Fang Steel, highlighting the tops of the silver details and the edges for this rear section.
Right, it's time to start making things glow a little. So we're going to start with Fire Dragon Bright on the orbs and the eyes. You don't need to worry about touching the sides around the orb as this will give that projected light effect. Now we enhance this with some dry brushing of the same colour, aiming for the areas which the light would be visible on the surface of, such as the head and the armour around the orb. It is best to brush outwards from the light source to make it look realistic, avoiding going too heavy with this, just build it up slowly. I'm going to add a little shading to this to break up the colour using Caraberg Crimson around the orbs and the eyes. This will make the recesses more visible, while also adding a little red to the shadow. To further add that glow, we're going to add a little bit of flash gets yellow, thinned down with a small amount of water. You don't need to cover the whole of the orbs and the eyes, just try and leave a gap for the orange to show through towards the outside. dry brushing the same as before but now with yellow. Again build it up slowly and with smaller strokes. You want to keep this closer to the light source than we did with the orange. Finally we can add the top highlight of White Scar, lightly thinned down with water, to the middle of the orbs and the eyes, aiming for the dead centre of each and keeping it very minimal as to not overpower the other colours. I'm also adding a small amount around the edges either side of the orb, but keeping it just to these small areas rather than doing a full edge highlight. And with a quick bit of black paint around the rim of the base, the model is now complete. I hope you enjoyed the video. Sorry it's taken me so long to get this video out. I have a lot more content planned and underway at the moment. Let me know in the comments below what your favourite Xeno race is. It could come up in a future video. Thanks for watching and have a good one.